I'm the Strategic Sustainability Lead for Glastonbury Festivals. I work on green initiatives and projects. I'm the Green Communications Officer at Glastonbury Festivals. God, what do I do here? I look after all the dirty things outside, basically. <laughs> I have grown up here on Worthy Farm. I now co-organise the festival with my dad, Michael, who started it in 1970. My parents run one of the greenfield areas, so I was a part of the festival since birth. I grew up sort of running around and playing at the festival. As I got older, I started to hassle people for work and uh, got the opportunity to work on sustainability. It's vastly, vastly different to what it was like in the 80s. The festival when I was growing up was quite small, pretty much just occupied these two fields and now um Glastonbury Festival's evolved organically on a farm. For the festival to be sustainable, uh, it has to work together. The farm comes first and then the festival comes after that. So the farm always has to be looked after and always has been right from the start. We tried to keep it as rural as possible and as green as possible. This year we're banning the sale of single-use plastic bottles. We're selling water in cans instead. We're also having 60 refill points, so we've got a combination of kiosks where you can go and hand over your reusable bottle and they'll fill it up, or you can do like a self-service. We're building a city essentially, but we're working with a farm and a valley, and so we need to bring the city in and let it go without impacting too much on what is a very kind of rural part of the world. The way we deal with it has changed because of course the festival's grown massively from what it started as. It used tiny thousands of people and now we have over 200,000 people on site and I suppose the waste they produce, the amount of it and the kind of waste has shifted through time. You get 200,000 people onto a site and they're going to bring a lot of stuff with them and we need to ensure that everything that they do bring with them goes and is responsibly dealt with. Glastonbury Festival uh, set up the Worthy Warriors scheme a couple of years ago and it's a way of getting members of the public who have bought tickets to come to the event to help us to communicate with where to take things, what to bring with them and what to take away again. Millions of litres of sewage have to be processed from this event, but we screen it all before it goes off site. So we put it through a machine where sanitary items and any waste that's been thrown into it gets separated out. You wouldn't see it, you wouldn't know about it, but it's something that we do as a kind of a, a, an extra thing. We have daily litter picks where the rubbish is picked up and put into separate bags, cans and bottles into a green bag, the biodegradable food disposables into another bag and then non-recyclable waste into another one. We have oil drum bins, we have 12,000 of them. The public can separate into three different bin types. And then we also have waste recycling centres and the waste is separated there. We have a very large barn up on site which is the recycling centre. I think it's the largest temporary recycling centre in the country when it's on. We're always thinking of green initiatives. So for several years now all serveware and packaging um, from Food outlets has been compostable and gets mixed up with unedible food waste, so that all goes off to a facility just north of Bristol. Any edible food waste, we use it on site where we can, and if we can't, you know, then it goes to um, local charities and local sort of organisations. 2019 is year one. We've got five years until the next fallow year. The main point for our fallow year um, is to, to rest the land and to give the wildlife around it a break so the grass can come back, the animals don't get disrupted, they have a chance to bed in and, and do the things animals do. The wildlife here is obviously very important. As you look around you can see all the massive old trees and wildlife. So we have a lot of deer and um, we even have hares. We've spotted some hares this week running around. These wide hedgerows and banks of trees, they're all fenced off with Harris fencing to protect the wildlife within and also to protect the stream from, you know, people urinating in the street because um, we've had problems with that in the past. We're putting in some quite major kind of infrastructure upgrades around the site, one of which is an anaerobic digester plant which is linked to the farm, so the cattle slurry will go into that, it'll get turned into biogas and that will generate electricity which we can run the farm and the long-term ambition is to utilise some of that power down to things like the pyramid production area. There's tiny bits of like micro 
rubbish that's all around the place and Rob and his team will go back after a couple of months and then they'll turn up all the ground, churn it back up and anything that's been trodden in deep down in within the mud gets all brought back up again. What we tend to do is it's really muddy is sort of power harrow the mud down, take all the rubbish out of it and just grass seed it down. We want to incentivise people to leave less waste, to pack consciously. We're getting better at it, but it's a long, it's a, you know, it's a long-term mission. Packing, we'd love you to come as light as possible. We'd love you to uh, bear in mind this is a farm. We'd love you to think about what you bring and, and try and move away from a disposable, convenient lifestyle. I'll tell you what's a pain. You can go to any supermarket and you can buy these camping chairs and everybody, you know, everybody sees them on the way in. They think, I'll just buy a couple of them, two for a fiver, and they put them down. And then sometimes, not everybody, but quite a lot of people leave them behind. You know, you just have to like, consider these things because we've got so many items we're left with. And we're really asking people just from the very first stage to be, you know, to be aware and conscious of what they're packing. Come with good old fashioned soap and flannel, leave your wipes behind, um, bring a good sturdy tent and take it home with you. You don't really need to bring very much at Glassbury Festival, just, you know, bring um, a good open mind.